Good morning everyone, how are you doing? I am David D. K. Thorne, a student from Sir Caldwell's State University. So today, we are going to be discussing about the two types of renewable energy source. First is the geothermal and second is the hydroelectric. Now, every one of us knows that these are sources of energy, but little do we know on the process of the generation of electricity from these sources. So let's buckle up and let's learn to our lesson. Before we proceed to our lesson, let us first have our objectives. At the end of the lesson, students are expected to explain how heat from inside the earth, geothermal, and from flowing water, hydroelectric, is tapped as a source of energy for human use. Before we proceed to our lesson, here is an interesting real-life story. A 5.9 magnitude earthquake hit the town of Carrascal, Surrey Gallions on a Friday night of March 2012. If you are a local from this town, you would probably remember the fear and anxiety in the faces of local residents. The local government ordered an evacuation at 10 p.m. because of a possible tsunami threat that caused havoc. Residents were running towards higher ground for their own safety. Multiple aftershocks followed after days. To make the long story short, the town was then visited by Phoenix experts, and upon their research, they theoretically stated that there might be a possibility of an underwater volcano located a couple miles from Carrascal's seashore. Now, that is quite scary, knowing the fact that it can be disastrous from the town. Nevertheless, there is still benefits if the theory is proven to be right. When there is a volcano, it means that there is an abundance heat and there it can be transformed as a geothermal energy for human use. And this will be our topic for today. Have you ever been in a hot spring just like this? We love to enjoy the soothing and energizing effect of water from a hot spring. But have you ever wondered where this thing come from? Since our country is home to more than a hundred volcanoes, energy has been tapped from them. Recently, the Philippines ranked third in the world's production of geothermal energy. In Mindanao alone, there are 20 volcanoes. One is located in Surigao del Norte, known as the Mount Pak, and it is currently inactive. According to the Department of Energy, 14.4% of country's total power generation is produced from geothermal energy. The nearest geothermal power plant in our locality is the Mount Abu Geothermal Power Plant. And it is located in Kitabawan City, North Cotabato. The production of electricity from geothermal energy is cheaper than the electricity production using natural gas, coal, and hydropower. Before we go on with the process, let us briefly define first geothermal energy. The Earth is believed to be extremely hot from within. This heat from the Earth's interior is a source of energy called geothermal energy. Geothermal came from the Greek word geo, which means Earth, and thermi, which means heat. Therefore, it is the heat from the Earth. Geothermal energy is the heat that is stored deep within the earth that originates from the melting magma and the decay of radioactive substances. An example of a geothermal energy is shown in your screen right now. Most geothermal energy resources are usually found in the areas around lake borders, where most volcanic eruptions and earthquakes happen. In addition, areas with active volcano have high geothermal energy systems. This is because the hot molten rock materials called magma located under the Earth's surface may heat the circulating ground water. Now, how is geothermal energy generated? Geothermal energy is generated in two ways. The first way is geothermal power plants. Geothermal power plants, it is where the heat from within the Earth changes water into steam, which turns steam and turbines that generate electricity. Geothermal power plants are found in places where it is particularly hot just below the surface, such as near a group of geysers, hot springs, 
of volcanic activity. They generate energy by carrying heat to the surface via fluid circulation through various types of mechanics. Now, let us move on to our main topic. How is geothermal energy tapped as a source for human use? Now, let us discuss the steps on how to generate electricity on a geothermal power plant. The first step is hot water is pumped from deep underground to a well under high pressure. How can we do this? Wells are drilled one or two miles deep into the earth to pump steam or hot water to the surface. Do you ever wonder how far, how deep one or two miles is? It's like from Carrascal National High School down to Cantilan National High School. You're mostly likely to find one of these power plants in an area that has a lot of hot springs, geyser, or volcanic activity because these are places where the earth is particularly hot just below the surface. Number two. When the water reaches the surface, the pressure is dropped, which causes the water to turn into steam. Now, steam is the main component of the generation of electricity. The steam spins a turbine, which is connected to a generator that produces electricity. Now, second to the last step, the steam cools off in a cooling tower and condenses back to water. Now, for the last step, the cooled water is pumped back to the earth to begin the process again. Now, because Philippines is located in the Pacific Ring of Fire, it has many volcanic areas that can be utilized for geothermal energy production. I'm sure that we are all familiar with the Camigan Island because it is near in our locality. It is a great spot for geothermal power plant because it is surrounded with many active volcanoes. One of it is the famous Mount Ibokibo. Now, let us move on to the second part of our lesson, which is the hydroelectric power. So, what is a hydroelectric power plant? Hydropower or hydroelectricity refers to the conversion of energy from the flowing water into electricity. It is considered a renewable energy source because the water cycle is constantly renewed by the sun. There are two main types of hydroelectricity production the dams and the runoff river. Hydro dams utilize the potential energy from the dam water to produce electricity. A dam is a large barrier constructed to raise the level of water and control its flow. In connection, in our locality, there is a mini dam and an irrigation system which can be a potential hydropower plant because of the heavy flow of water. It is located in Barangay Peniken of Carrascal, Surigao del Sur. It is called the Papagabu Powerhouse, but locals call it as the Dinehugan Dam. The dam has potential to produce hydropower electricity because of sufficient flow of water energy from the mountains of Bavlian. So we move on now to the parts of a hydroelectric plant. Most conventional hydroelectric plants include four major components along their function. Number one is the dam. It raises the water level of the river to create flowing water. It also controls the flow of water in the reservoir that is formed is, in effect, stored energy. Number two is the turbine. The force of falling water pushing against the turbine blades causes the turbine to spin. A water turbine is much like a windmill, except the energy is provided by falling water instead of wind. The turbine converts the kinetic energy of falling water into mechanical energy. Third is the generator. Connected to the turbine by shafts, possibly here so when the turbine spins, it causes the generator to spin also. Converts the mechanical energy from the turbine into electric energy. Generators in hydropower plants work just like the generators other types of power plants. Transmission lines conduct electricity from the hydropower plant homes and businesses. This ends our topic. Just remember, for geothermal energy, steam is the major factor that turns the turbine for the generation of electricity. On another note, the flow of falling water from the dam is responsible for hydropower electricity. This has been David Ray. Castro Latino.
Niji Arisubal. Thank you for listening. God bless and keep safe.